personalized ride bikes bro coffee cups i got these for the race season last this year 2020 where i was going to have a coffee booth out of every race the goal was to provide free coffee to all the racers and uh and get people into the booth right have like a booth experience hopefully next year we can do that hey siri how do you spell failure failure f a i l u r E. Shit. The last two episodes I talked about my business and what you saw was the tip of the iceberg. So let's talk about a little bit about how much I've failed in my life. This little chunk right here. Ooh, wow. People see that. And they go, man, you're so lucky. Because that's what is now. But what people don't see is that how many times you've gotten totally screwed. There is so many dicks below the surface of success. And sometimes it could just go on for, I mean, it could be so many dicks before you get here. And a lot of times, people stop around this point. They just go, dude, I've been screwed too many times and I gotta give up. I'm 18, okay? And my handwriting is atrocious, deal with it, all right? So now I'm 35. So from 18 to 35, boy, it's been a ride. 18 years old, uh, 17 years old, I drop out of high school chasing money. That's a story I'll tell another time, but so I drop out of high school and I go and I get a job selling cars. That is a huge success. Because it wasn't just a podunk rinky dink car dealership. This was like the top of the line Ford dealership guaranteed pay. It was guaranteed five grand a month. God, I was an idiot. So guaranteed, it was 2,500 twice a month guaranteed sell no cars or whatever for six months. So a huge success. But I didn't just stand in the lot and do nothing, I crushed and I sold a lot of cars. There was one car, said, people said, no one can sell that car. It was like a red Volvo, uh, but there was a huge markup in it. And if you sold that one car, you get 2,500 bucks. Now, when you sold cars, it did take away from your guaranteed pay. So you had to sell more than five grand to go above five grand. It wasn't like five grand plus what you sold. You know what I mean? But anyway, at 18 years old, I'm making somewhere between five grand and $7,000 a month. Then some guy rolls up to the lot and he says, hey bro, do you wanna drive a Ferrari? And I said, of course I wanna drive a Ferrari. And then he said, I've got the business for you, but you're gonna to have to quit. You gotta come work for me. But what I didn't realize was that that was a pyramid scheme and you had to sell phone service. So I get to this little, dump of an office and they're like, all right, get your grandma on the phone, sell her this phone service. But you know what I mean? That's not really how we make money. We make money by you getting people to come underneath you and sell this shitty ass phone service. And, and oh, by the way, you have to pay us $700 to work here. And it's like, oh my God. I did really give it an A effort though. It was like me and like two buddies in a house uh, trying to make it work. It didn't work. So we're gonna give that one a big old failure getting the D. So left a really good job and now I have no money. But what I will say is that by, by doing this, I really realized that I want to work for myself. I want to be a business owner and I want to drive Ferraris. So still while I was 18, 18 was a big year for me. The economy went through the roof. And in 2004, you could refinance homes. You could get home loans on stated income. No paperwork, you could just say, hey, I'll pay you back, I swear. And so they would give you money. And I was able to pull out of a house $50,000, and that is another big old success. I pulled out 50 grand and I started a retail motorcycle shop. I sold dirt bike 
and street bike apparel and accessories. I got a tire machine. I was doing uh, a little bit of labor, but it mainly was like casual clothes and gear. I started that business when I was 18. I had no idea what I was doing. That whole business and that whole time in my life could warrant an entire video in and itself. But that, and that over three years, cause that's what it was, or four years, it was 2004 to 2008. You know, and, I, and there was so much I had to learn, like I had to run TV ads and, and uh, inventory and, and distributors. And it was like, it was a big thing. Um, there was a lot to it. But anyway, at 2008, the end of 2007, 2008, the economy collapsed. And I went from eating filet mignon and lobster every day to getting the shaft. And I went out of business real quick. It was literally within 30 days. I went from thinking I was gonna expand to I am a million dollars in debt and I have no ability to pay back any of my debtors at all, creditors, however you would say that. I have no income. I went from the highest of highs to the lowest of lows real quick. I lost my truck and my bikes and my toy hauler, all materialistic possessions gone. Me and my wife ended up staying in my grandma's foreclosed home. It was, there were so many foreclosures going on at that time that uh, the bank was just like, hey, if you just don't rip the copper pipes out of the wall, we'll let you stay there until we can evict you. So then for the next two years, 22 to 23-ish, it's kind of hard to remember, but you know what I mean. Uh, I was working in a debt settlement office, just like just a suit and a tie and talking to people about debt and making zero money. And so we'll just, uh, you know, give another big old shafto. So that was not good, not success. Success, not success, success, not success, not success again. But I learned a lot during this actually. And there was a, a, a loophole in the system that allowed for a pay structure of debt settlement to get out of control. And you started to make a percent of the debt that you closed, which got really squirrely because then people would lie and be super dishonest to the, to the clients because the more that you could get, the more money you made. And then you would just smoke these people. I didn't, but a lot of people did. Right around 23-ish at the end, I was making a crazy amount of money. And so I was like, this is success, dude. This, I, I've made it back up. Bro, we were cashing $10,000 checks every two weeks. That's insane. And it didn't last very long. It was only a couple months. And then the government stepped in like they probably should have and said, hey man, that's illegal. But when I was making that money, me and my wife decided we're balling out, let's have a kid. So when that she got the positive pregnancy test and then literally the next day, the government made that type of debt settlement and pay structure illegal. So I went from no longer having a job. So success to again, a big old a D. So then uh, myself and two others pulled some money together to make an online gambling site. And that took a lot of work and a lot of risk uh, because I had to expend this cash, right? With like a newborn, all right? So then we created a gambling site, a big success. Now, again, there was a lot of risk uh, in this again because I put out so much money to create the site. Um, and, and then to run it and that sort of thing. Uh, also, on top of that gambling site, we actually then created a online gambling forum. That was a huge success. Maybe one of the most successful things in business I've ever done. So not only were we making money from the online gambling site, but I was charging our competitors to replace ads on this form. And no one knew that we owned this form, so it was like kind of, a conflict of interest a little bit, I guess, but like, you know what I mean? Everyone's coming to this forum to talk about this online gambling space and we owned that forum. So then we were making tons of money on ads. There was actually a point where I, I there was too many people wanting to pay us money for ads. It had gotten too big. Lots of success, man. This was again, huge. And at one point we made 60 grand in one month through the online gambling site and the forum. But you know what happens next, right? The government said, hey, online gambling is kind of weird. There's a gray area. Oh boy, 
That was a big one, you know? Overnight, we could not access our funds. So payment processing, and this is like a whole tangent that I could get into, but payment processing is, is a very difficult thing to do. So when someone pays you online, it gets processed through a bank. Well, all banks decided to say that if you are on doing online gambling, they would not do business with you. There was no way to take money online. So that was, it wasn't like the government made online gambling illegal. They just, they put it in this gray area and no payment processors would approve anyone's account. And our payment processor held and seized our money. So that huge month of 60 grand we did, smoked. Okay, so so what a roller coaster. Okay, so then what's next? We gotta figure out a way to make money, like I've got a kid. So then we got some investors to go in on an online gaming site, free online games, and then you like upgrade your avatar, and there was this whole, you know, it's free to play, but there's like, you can pay for perks and upgrades and that sort of thing. So we were able to take on a good amount of investment which I actually, it's really weird to even say this is a success. I just, I guess it's a, a success because I did pull in investment, but I hated it. We had to have these calls every week with the investors and you know, it's their money. Their direction of the business is, is, is completely dependent on make more money now, but that's not how businesses grow. Sometimes you have to go in the hole. Sometimes you have to worry about on a growth strategy that has nothing to do with income. And so it was really uncomfortable. You know, there were so many things I wanted to do, but I, I just, you couldn't because of the investors. I actually, man, I had no idea what I was doing and I had to learn overnight how to code games. I was making video games. Bro, I'm not a video game maker. I remember staying up till like all night, 24 hours. I just all day, all night to create this like honey game there's like a, a bee slot machine and so then you know i'm making all these slots and there's like bees and honey dripping i was actually really proud of it i made a bunch of games there's a whole industry into online games it's actually really crazy it's i could go all day talking about that but okay so i would say that's a success uh until the investors came and said you know what we uh, think that this there's no future here and we're gonna go ahead and start a dog food company. So they pulled out and there's just, we did, I mean, we had a user base, but no one was really paying for the upgrades. It was all free user base. So we had to shut that down. The whiplash bro of business is getting old at this point. And I'm kind of starting to run out of room. But so after that, uh, there was a real weird period where I was just doing anything I could to make money. I was like consulting uh, this this business company. I don't even know what they were doing. That was really strange. Uh, then I also was cutting fruit at a farmer's market. Like, bro, I had no money. And when I say no money, I don't mean like, oh, I have money in the bank and I've got a safety net and I've got stock kind of money. Like, dude, we have no bank account. We're pulling like pennies and scrap out of the couch literally to eat, man. My landlord, I had no money to pay my landlord. And so I was like, hey, I wanna buy the house. And she was like, oh, sweet. And I was like, can you drop paperwork and see like, yeah, like what it would be to like buy the house? And that gave me a whole month of leeway. And maybe that's shady, dude, but I, 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 I dragged this landlord along for like two months, uh, having her think that I was gonna buy the house. And so while that was happening, I didn't have to pay rent. I, and I just gambled. I was like, I'll just make it work in the next two months, I guess. And then so I started a web development company with two other business partners that have really been along for this entire ride. So, so the other two business partners, the, the, the trust that I have with them is unparalleled. You can't even question the commitment. Uh, we're a really great team. Um, and so then we started this web development business and bro, it was just nothing but dicks for years, years. Uh, this is the dicks are getting so bad right now. Okay. I mean, I'm trying to sell websites to anyone who will buy a website. I, I, I didn't know what I was doing. I had to learn how to write CSS code in a weekend because the thing is, man, most businesses, they fail, fail epically around the, the, the mound of dick period, I was thinking, man, 
I've got to just settle down and get a job. I have to do something. What can I do? Can I get into advertising or marketing? Like, what would I want to do for a living? And then there was this little shred of success. I'm just gonna like a little dot, okay? A little dot there. I had a friend who worked at Trail Gear and uh, was selling parts and stuff and he had a customer who needed to buy more parts from Trail Gear, but he didn't have a website. So then my buddy was like, hey, can you build him a website? I'm like, I don't know anything about e-commerce, uh, but sure, send him my way. So so then we get this, this client and I, we had been charging like $500 for a website. And when we asked him what he had paid for his current website, which was a pile of turds, he had said five grand. And, and we were like, what? Five grand? And so we charged him $2,500, which was like insane at the time. Uh, and, then, and then we had to learn, because we charged him, how to build an e-commerce website. It did not go well. It ended in a massive dumpster fire in which that, that's my dumpster fire there. Uh, it ended with that he wanted, we promised to put on like 50 brands. Okay, so imagine if you had to put on, on a website manually, every specialized product that they make from bearings to bars, to helmets, to shoes in all sizes and all colorways with descriptions and images and titles. How long do you think that's going to take you? Well, it took us way too long. And so we lost a tremendous amount of money on that project. We charged $2,500 and you know, we ended up spending like 200 hours on a turd of a website, but that was the little seed. So, I mean, I guess, you know, we'll give another little dick right there for that one, but it was, it was a, uh, it was a, it was a, it was a, an encouraging dick. Okay. So then that, that led us into building another website for an e-commerce off-road because it's in the aftermarket off-road industry, like Jeeps and trucks and stuff like that. And so then, let's say the success started to just snowball, okay? We eventually uh, had a really solid base, and then so I'm gonna flip it over here and sort of show you that like, okay, out of all the dicks, right? So much work to create this platform to be able to build a successful business on. But then once it's there, which is so hard to get over the hill to like go from a concept to we're worrying about day to day activities in the business, right? But we don't have to concern ourselves with new clients. We have a we have a pipeline of customers that we don't have to worry about income. We can worry about working on the business growth instead of trying to, you know, make this pie in the sky idea work. So then we built on top of that and every time you know, you would uh, go from creating a concept to, to then maybe optimizing that concept to then the next step, you know, hiring employees, right? So then it just gets better and better and better, right? And so then you start to get to this point where your income, your income here, it, the, the amount of time that you have to put in to make money is way low, but that's sitting on top of all of this other hard work. So again, remember, everyone sees this bit. Everyone sees, especially like with training, right? Everyone sees pros and they're like, dude, you're so strong, how'd you get there? You know what I mean? But you just don't often see the amount of work that goes on down here and the amount of times that, okay, you're here, right? And there's just so much shit you're having to get through and you quit here. You never made it here. We never hear about this guy's story, right? You don't hear about the people who don't make it. You only hear about the people who do make it. And often it seems like an overnight success. Wow, how did this guy become successful overnight? It was never overnight, dude. There are so many failures over so many years. There's so many times that I absolutely got the shaft. Everything in my life has just been these steps of success, utter failure, success, utter failure, success, utter failure. So. That was so long that my coffee's cold. Okay, so today um, I've got two hours. There's the program. I got to ride for two hours. Here's an issue is that the vegan cyclist 100 plus one is tomorrow at 7 a.m. And I, I only got four hours of sleep last night. Uh, there's no way that I can sustain this 
I am for sure cracking. If one, I need to ride now because I can't ride later in the day. Like if I rode at seven at night, then I got I would have less than 12 hours to recover before I ride four hours, 101 miles on a trainer. So I need to ride pretty much straight away, like as soon as possible, but I do have some work to do. I'm, I'm slipping, dude. I'm already, like, the priority wise, things are falling apart a little bit. Um, and so I really need to sort of regroup here and find a better flow to the to my program. But that is what this month is about, is to completely screw up your life, dude, and throw it into chaos so that you can find better ways to manage it. Now, again, this is not sustainable. I'm not gonna do this past December, uh, but I will become much more efficient going forward. So let me crush this. So I know my business story was insanely long and I apologize for that. If you skipped through it, again, the too long, didn't watch. I've had a lot of failures in business. You've been around a lot of these failures. What is your thoughts? What were your thoughts? Is there's any way you can remember when it's just like you're pregnant and I no longer have income? I think that I always just knew that you would figure it out and that we'd be fine. And that's some crazy trust because I didn't think that. So definitely sleep is becoming an issue. Uh, we've just got like weird little things that happen. So every day, every time, every day so far, there's been issues that have made it to where I don't get to bed till really late. Uh, and then for whatever reason, I have to wake up early. So today, uh, every Friday, I take my son to the bus so that she can go do high fitness. What is high fitness? Uh, high interval workouts to songs. She like Before COVID, I would do it no problem. But now with COVID, it's earlier and I only do it one day a week where normally I would do it two days. Right, so how stupid is it that I'm like, oh, I'm riding 20 hours in the week and she wants to go do one workout one hour a week and I have to be like, hey, I need sleep. It's unacceptable. Like, I, It's just not even an option for me to ask her to not uh, do that. So, and then tomorrow I have the Vegan Cyclist 100 plus one on Zwift, which starts at seven in the morning. We're full gas right now. It is a bit rough. Uh, and obviously training like a pro means recovering like a pro, but I'm not a pro. So, you know, we're doing what we can. We're doing the best that I possibly can. I understand recovery is important. I understand sleep is important, but this is the only thing in my life at this moment that I can tax for time. And you can sleep when you're dead. <laughs> And, and look, I often get to sleep nine, 10 hours a day, right? I mean, I, I just this one month, I'm trying to really push and to do something that I would have never been able to do, which is to create a video every single day. That's pushing me absolutely to my breaking point, but I love it. I'm loving it. I'm loving this challenge. But I cannot do this. I cannot 
train, like I'm just snowballing into where I need more and more sleep to recover. And especially tomorrow is going to be a pretty difficult day. So, you know, it is what it is, dude. It's going to be difficult. Growth is not being comfortable. Fact. Uh, and I'm straight up very uncomfortable. I forgot my hair looks like this. It's all good. Your hair's amazing. So, look, here's one thing is that I, if at all I thought that I was actually destroying my health permanently, I wouldn't do this. I would stop. Okay, but like a couple nights of having poor sleep, you know what I mean? It's not that big of a deal. Uh, I think that I would trade that for the, the gains that I'm making just in my overall program of life. Maybe I'm not making a whole lot of gains on the bike because of no recovery, but it doesn't matter. Appreciate you. As always, vegan cycles. Yeah. Yeah. Give me a better yeah. 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 There you go. Thank you, babe. I love you. Love you.